hi lads thanks a million for connecting and obviously this video is just to maybe focus on the expressions that we use normally in a chat um and i suppose the first topic could be about the pandemic and maybe luke i don't know how was your experience was it an absolute nightmare was it a disaster how was how was it for you well i mean it's uh it's been crap <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, we've uh been locked away for for you know a year and a bit now and uh not much freedom and then some of us been given back and then someone's been taken away and uh you get with the set up home offices and um adjust to a whole new working environment as well as not interacting socially is with your friends like it, let's say this is what the sixth time uh i've seen besides as dave because we live together um but like maybe it's the sixth time I've seen Kieran since the initial lockdown. So uh, surviving it, I suppose, is the best best way to to determine it. Surviving it um, and trying to keep a positive frame of mind, but it can be tough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's been a nightmare. And Kieran, what do you think? Has it been tricky for you, or maybe different at different stages? Definitely tricky at different stages. I kind of go through periods of thinking it's grand and feeling like I'm not entitled to complain. And then other times where this is, you know, it's, it's actually insane. And it's, it's really been in waves. Like I was quite fortunate to have been traveling before the pandemic. So I came back actually exhausted and kind of okay with the first few months of it. So I, I think I had an extra, I had a bit of a, a window before when other people kind of got tired, I had an extra few months cause I'd just been back from traveling and was actually exhausted and going to, do nothing anyway um and the other thing that helped was i moved apartment halfway through the pandemic so i got like a fresh five kilometer radius zone so whenever <laughs> i'm sticking there is i got a completely brand new 5k so it's kind of cheating um and yeah again just like not having kids i'd previously worked remote remotely for five years so i was kind of comfortable with that so pretty fortunate in terms of like how i was set up for it um so I, I don't feel like I can complain as much as most, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been difficult. Yeah, and, and Dave, I mean, how is it for you? I guess you can probably identify with maybe every, but what everybody's saying. I think, yeah, I think Kieran, a mixture of what Kieran and Luke were saying, like with Kieran, definitely it comes in waves where you're feeling, this is, I can do this forever. And then, it, you know, the next day it's like, I just need to do anything. You know, you, you, there's, there's just no plans. No, you, you haven't got anything organized for the weekend and then everyone's on on Fridays is there everyone's like oh so what are you doing for the weekend and like the same as every weekend and so yeah that, that does kind of take its toll and then you get over it and then it, you, you get back to you back to normal or the new normal as you said as you would say um mm -hmm. but yeah I, again very lucky to for for what I do for work so working from home is is you know relatively comfortable because you know software engineer all you need is a laptop and a desk and, and you can work away so yeah. um yeah it's definitely the social aspect even though i'd be relatively introverted you know at the start it was fine but then after a few months you become maybe i'm not as introverted as i thought i was and you know you know not having those social even if it's just the chats in the kitchen at work or going for the odd lunch with one of your workmates or you know meeting the lads once a month or whatever it is you know it just it does take its toll then you know the zoom calls were were good at the start because you know you were in shock of the whole thing you know yeah everyone was just like oh my god what is this but we're all in it together kind of idea but then after you know after a few 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 weeks or a few months that kind of goes away if i feel yeah. so um, yeah then I, I think we're it's exactly spot on the waves thing makes Total sense, you know, because there, as you say, there's a couple of weeks where you're like, "This is grand. It's great. I love working from home. I can uh, the commute isn't the same, so I can exercise or do whatever." Um, and then there's other one, the other weeks. You're just like, "I need to get the. I need to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I also need to just not work today. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, it can." The weekends, are, the Fridays are becoming particularly difficult because you, 
you kind of you end up with your head down working for the week and then you're kind of used to just work. you're looking forward to friday and then you get to friday and realize there's not all that much to look forward to there's no there is no kind of like outlet for your excitement you just kind of get to friday okay. evening and then it's just the same as every other evening and then and then on sunday you're like what, what was the point in that I didn't do anything. Like I'm already back from work, and I, I don't have anything to show for it from the weekend. And, and what do you expect? Like for I suppose the last question, like going forward, do you think there will be like lots of um, like people going back to the office and people working from home? Personally, I think maybe if the bars and the pubs are open, people will want to maybe stay at home in the morning. It might be a bit difficult to to control. I don't know what what you all think about that. I know for our place anyway that uh, we'll probably have um, three days in the office, two days from home. I don't know if it's going to be you can choose the days that you work from home or um, if you can make if they're flexible and interchangeable throughout the uh, weeks and months. But yeah, um, I, I know that that's something in the pipeline anyway, mm. which I think would be a nice mix if you're able to do whichever one you want. Um, but if everyone has the same structure of, well, you have to be in two or three days a week. Grant. Yeah, I, I think because we, we had a town hall meeting today, um, you know, where everyone in the company joins in and the CEO would just tell you, give you a few updates on what's happening. And he, he said it, a lot of it re- depends on how many people are vaccinated. So, you know, come July or August, whenever we can go into the office, it'll all depend on, on that. And as you see, as Luke said, like, I'd be interested if you can ch- change per week or months. Like I want to go in on a Monday and a Friday, or you know. But if it's like I have to, you just you just get your you get what you're given kind of thing. I don't know if I'd be that interested in in going yeah. to the office. So. I, I have a feeling it's going to be like everyone has to be everyone has to come in on Wednesday, for instance, mm-hmm. and then you can work from home whatever other two days during the week. That's what I think yeah. it's gonna... or even per team maybe like because uh, the CEO has mentioned like you know if you have a, a some sort of project meeting that everyone comes in that day like a big project meeting everyone comes in that day and um yeah I, I can't think of even what it would be like to be in an office right now even though it's only been you know it's only been about a year and a half like it, that that world it is a long time but it isn't as well like it, it shouldn't be that hard to picture it but it you know it is quite i can't even think about it like it's yeah a different world what what do you think here on i mean are you well you work from home anyway i think are you worked from yeah home? Most, most of the time but i before this i was renting a desk in a co-working space and going in there so i kind of had that flexibility before where you decide which days you went in and which days you didn't but as it turned out when i had that flexibility i actually ended up going in nearly every day probably like certainly four days a week and then it's having that one day extra a week is just like crucial and being able to choose when that is like that's even so it, if you can choose when it is it makes you feel like you have full flexibility so you find on a sunday evening that you're kind of not looking forward to work and you're like if you don't actually have to go into the office it removes most of that feeling where you're like well i just i'll just work from home and it eases that then you wake up monday morning and you're actually like i'm actually just going to go in i'll take tomorrow from home or that flexibility just makes you feel so in control even though you end up going in most days. Um, I'll be, but in, in June, I think I'm gonna, certainly July, I'm gonna go straight back into the co-working space. Part-time like that as well, but I just can't wait to, mm-hmm. I can't wait to get back in for even just a few days a week, or even if it was like two. Um, it helps that that's in town for you as well. Yes, yeah, it's easy to get to. Mines and swords. Uh, I'd be more, I'd be more willing to go if it was in town, you know? Yeah, I'm going in because of the social life afterwards, and that, that starts in June. That's the incentive. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. Um, super. So that's a really just general chat with like amongst friends. And I just want to show you lads just some of the the tips, I suppose, that I would show to other people. I don't know if you would be aware of these um, expressions. So just let me make this bigger. But it's really interesting. Uh, most of what you said. So, for example, Luke, you were saying it's crap. Like it's obviously really bad and. That's obviously very typical. We say that a lot. To go through, that's like an expression that would be very difficult for people to understand. And it means maybe to endure or to experience a really difficult time. Um, Kieran, you had a brilliant expression as well, like entitled. And for people learning English, that's very, very difficult to understand. And it means like you have the permission, you have the right. 
Um, and for some reason, these words are very difficult. In waves as well, again, that's good. Like it's something that comes, um, sometimes it's good and then other times it's bad. So these are good expressions. And then this expression for me is very good as well. Something brand new is like completely new. But of course, a brand is like Adidas, Nike, etc. But again, a lot of people wouldn't really understand that expression. Brand new is like completely new. It's straight out of the box. Pardon? Straight out of the box, like from a sealed box, you're opening yeah. it. Brand new. Yeah, exactly. So that's another one as well. Um, so these expressions are very difficult for people to catch. Another one, like pretty fortunate, is like quite. And we can say like obviously rather pretty, quite. And another expression, again, it takes its toll. And of course, we remember the toll bridge is where you pay the money. So toll is like a price. So it, you, you suffer the price, you have to pay a price. And this expression is very native as well. Um, in shock. So we have a lot of expressions from the chat. And this is the reason I think it's very, very important and very good. Even spot on. Luke, I mean, how would you try to explain that expression to somebody? If you're trying to teach, what would you say? Dead on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's spot on. It's um, precisely. On the nose, precisely. Yeah. <laughs> on the nose. <laughs> More phrases. <laughs> It's very, very hard. So I would say maybe a spot on your face. If you have a spot on your face and if you're looking at a map, you say this is a good spot for a restaurant. And also the verb to spot is like to identify. But also if you give your friend money, you spot your friend. So you can see it's very difficult and very flexible. And um, the next one, of course, is very famous. And get yeah, I, I, re I realized that just saying that. I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> And then even Kieran, this one's a brilliant one. And this is obviously a phrasal verb in English. But I don't know how you might explain that expression, Kieran, to, to somebody to end up. I don't know what, what advice or how would you explain that? You end up with your head down. So it's like after, after something. Um, but I've even, I'm even having trouble explaining that it's without where, context. It's where, it's where you, um, uh, where you finish like at the end uh like at the end of a race you know you end up at the finish line why up what what dave i said yeah but why up i think is the reason you know oh, oh yeah 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 exactly. that'd be why if you're struggling if you're new to english that's 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 really the key question why up i have no idea i suppose but typical in the bar in the restaurant if you go to a party you go yeah, to yeah. the first bar you go to the second bar and you end up on the floor <laughs> um, and then I suppose well, the, next... the, the last place I guess mm. for like you end up in, in like uh, we were everywhere and then we ended up in crawdaddies like that was the last place we were in you know yeah. um, so it, it's like end up at the finish line would be the last place you were at the end of the race was the finish line yeah so. and then looking forward to that's obviously we use this yeah. all the time and it's a bit difficult to explain. It means you're excited, you're enthusiastic, you're optimistic. Again, outlet, very, very difficult to explain. And it means obviously something that you can do to release some tension, to release some stress throughout. is very important as well when you learn English. It's like during everything throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year. Um, and then Luke, this was one of my favorites in the pipeline and what's your what's your ex explanation really for that uh, something something that's uh coming in the future so yeah. uh, like so, something that will be in place in the future like so yeah i, I realize everything i'm saying is more <laughs> difficult <laughs> so um in the pipeline is like I suppose you go the, the direct route, like oil in the pipeline, it's going from one place to the, from A to B. Mm, but what, like, Kieran, do you think, what's the origin of that expression, do you think? Is it oil or is it something different? I, I would have gone with oil as well. Pipeline, yeah. Water. I was thinking maybe the factory, like the production, and it's in the pipeline. Oh, no. I've no idea myself, I'm only guessing as well. But it's very famous, isn't it? We use it a lot. Yeah, don't think about it. 
and this is a very curious one as well because everybody from well the majority of people that are speaking spanish first or portuguese they say in english depends of depends of depends of but in english it's more typical i'm sure you'll agree depends on what about you dave would you say depends of or maybe never depends of I, yeah i wouldn't use depends of it would always be depends on yeah and it's incredible the, the amount of times that they that people make that confusion so it's simple but it is very important you get what you're given i suppose is more literal and it's not too difficult and then this is another classic another gem another uh, another nugget another beaut um as it turned out dave what, what might you uh, how would you explain that one how it finished yeah so maybe similar to end up yeah end up yeah Mm. and it's these are very very difficult for people to understand because turn like the process so it's very hard and then the final word for me which is very important is willing and it just really means that you're maybe content or happy to do this so that's just an expression lads (laughs) Thanks a million for the um, the chat. Really, really good. What's your reaction? Are you are you surprised with some of the expressions that are difficult, or what do you think? Uh, I'm very surprised with how much, how many of the sentences we say don't really make sense, or it would be very hard to explain them. We we really learn them, but don't actually understand them. Um, yeah, it's it's very surprising. Mm, what do you I'd think? I wonder. Your head. I'd wonder if you, how much you adapt. If like obviously I know we're all speaking to you know we're native English speakers. If I was speaking to someone who you know wasn't a native English speaking speaker, would I would I just naturally adapt or would yeah, I, yeah I hope I do. Yeah, you know so. I don't think we do though to the extent that we may hope. Yeah, yeah, probably not. Well, I just want to say thank you, and I know it's only it's five euro per person, so th- you can thank me for the class, mm-hmm. and uh, you can pay by PayPal, you can pay by Revolut. There's no problem. And uh, thanks a million, lads, and hopefully talk to you soon. <laughs> Do you have any last comments um, before we finish? Um, say it's more stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's tricky, but we'll obviously do more topics, but that's just the end of the topic in relation to lockdown and the pandemic. And thank you for your opinion. All thank right. You. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. Cheers.